Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video we are going to discuss how to take Mach 3 off of one computer and place it on another computer with all of your saved settings including your user license. This is a question that comes up virtually all the time. Unfortunately, it usually happens that it comes up when there's a problem with the computer rather than preemptively doing it. And if you're running a business, I highly recommend having it installed on at least two computers as a backup. The program, of course, doesn't take much room, but it saves a lot of headache in the long run. So what we want to do is we want to first come over. If you don't already have Mach 3 downloaded, you want to come over into your browser, type in mocksupport.com. That's M-A-C-H-S-U-P-P-O-R-T.com. Once you do that, it's going to bring you over to Artsoft site, also known as Newfangled Solution, aka the developer of Mach 3. You're then going to want to come over here to Downloads and Updates. Once you do that, you click on Main Programs. You want to scroll down past Mach 4, past the Mill Wizard, and you want to come here to Mach 3 Downloads, and it says, with the Mach 3 add-ons included, it's right in the center of the screen, Mach 3 R3.043. Now, I've already downloaded the software to streamline this process. If you haven't, once again, click this button, you'll see that the allocated folder where this program will end up is, of course, in your download folder. If you've changed that location, it will end up in whatever folder you've decided to allocate the downloads to. So once this is done, you're all set with this portion of uh, the process. The next thing to do is to come over and download this piece of software, which I've discussed many times on my channel. It's Revo Uninstaller. I love this software so much I've actually become um, a rep for it. Um, the software itself, just to give you an idea, Revo Uninstaller Pro, um, here's all the details of it. To give you just the gist of it real quick, when you uninstall a program from um, Windows in the standard format with add remove programs, you think your program is fully uninstalled and it's not. It leaves all kinds of folders and registry entries and little bits of data and I'm going to show you that. And what this software does is it doesn't use Windows traditional add remove programs uninstall. It uses its own version of an uninstaller that removes the program as if it was never installed, which is what we all typically want. I know I do. Keeps your system clean, makes everything run nice and smooth. That's what we want because over time, if you have all these remnants of software, naturally it plays havoc on your system with stability and speed, and that's just a no-go with CNC systems. So again, I've got two pieces of good news for you. Uh, you can download this. It is free to use for 30 days unregistered, and they do give you an actual, uh, uh, an actual usage that is not limited. So if you want to use it for 30 days, check it out, or just use it for this uninstall, you're fine. However, if you decide to buy it, the other piece of good news is right now it's 60% off. You're running it for $11.99 on top of a 60-day money-back guarantee for software, which is absolutely unheard of. They're that convinced that you're going to love it. I say check it out because I don't know many guys that can't afford that, especially in the CNC genre. So again, either way you look at it, download the free or the buy or excuse me, the purchase copy and go from that. Um, once that's done, we're going to close out of here. And what we want to do is we are going to want to come over to our actual Mach 3 software, and it's always on your C drive. You can see my C drive right here, and I click on Mach 3. And what we want to scavenge for is we're looking for our Mach 1 license.dat file. This is your Mach 3 license. Um, again, it'll have your name on it typically. You want to cut this out. I'm going to cut it. Once again, I go right over to my desktop because I've already got a new folder there that's empty, and I click Paste. And the other file where you want to go, in, which many guys don't even really pay that much attention to, is going to be the XML backups. Now, what most guys don't realize is Mach 3 is very intelligent. And when I say very intelligent, I've covered this before, Mach 3 auto creates backups of your settings. And how do we know that? If we click the README text from Artsoft, this directory is used to hold backups of your XMLs as you change them. If you would like to use one of the backups, simply change the file's extension to .xml and place it into the Mach 3 directory. Well, this is great news because we've already got our backup. My backup I've created is Mach3mil.xb1. Now, when I say what I created it, I really didn't do anything. It auto-creates it, but the settings that I want to show 
that are being reflected when I install Mach 3 again will be these. So in your case, you would make your backup and just take down the number because you can see here they go in chronological order, B1, B2, B3. I'm going to click on this, right click, cut it, and once again go to my desktop where I've got my new folder, where I've got my license saved. Now I know I've got my backup done and I've also got my Mach 1, my Mach 1 license.dat file which is often also my Mach 3 user file. Now that this is completed, I'm safe now to uninstall Mach 3 as if it was never installed. <clears throat> so again, coming over here you can see new programs, Mach 3 is in. Um, I'm just going to click on it and again, are you sure you want to uninstall the selected program? Mach 3, it's a 32-bit uh, program. It's telling me the size, tell me the version, tell me the date, all that neat stuff. Make a system restore point before install. You have that option. You also have the option to create a full registry backup before uninstall. I'm not choosing that, but once again, your system, uh, feel free to do that if you choose. It starts now the direct uninstaller EXE, which is built into all uh, regular programs. I'm going to click that. It's going to go through the standard uninstall. And now this is the brilliance of this program where now it kicks in and it says performing the initial analysis and uninstall, creating a system restore point and full registry backup. Of course, that's if you selected it. Analyze and starting the program's built-in uninstaller, which we've already gone through. After the program's uninstaller is finished, press the scan button to start scanning for leftover folders. Now this is where things get interesting, excuse me, leftover folders and registry items. You can see here scanning modes are set at either safe, moderate, advanced. Um, default setting is moderate. I highly recommend staying there. If you move to advanced, you better know what you're scanning because it will scrape the hell out of your system. And if you erase something that you need, not a big deal if you have your backups created once again when it's asking you to do them. Um, if you don't, that's where you'll have an issue. So again, I always recommend just leaving moderate. That's plenty. Click on scan. She's doing her job, and now you can get to see what's left over. And look at this crap. This is your registry crap, stuff you never see normally, but it's still left in the system. So we're going to select all, delete, buy. Now we're going to come over here and look at all the other folders and add-ons and crap that's left over. And even though it's been uninstalled, this is what's left over. As a matter of fact, folders are 75. Files are 537, total size 56.2 meg. And when guys tell me that they don't understand, why is my system slow? It's from 1991. You know, That's why your system is slow. So we have to use intelligence. We have to use common sense when it comes to using the proper PC. And again, the older the computer, computers literally age like dogs. For every one year now, technology is jumping at least seven to eight, maybe even 10 years ahead. So you definitely want to stay tuned with keeping your PC clean. That is the caveat. It's not so much the age as it is how clean it is. And again, using modern operating systems. Once again, I'm using Windows 10. Use the best PC your budget can afford. I'll say it again. The best PC your budget can afford. So now we're going to hit select all. Now we're going to delete all this crap. Okay. Say goodbye to Mach 3. It is now gone, and we are safely set because we have our Mach 1 license.dat, which is our end user license, and we also have our Mach 3 mil.xb1. Now, remember what that note said in the README text. It said, if I want to use this to replace my settings, all I have to do is replace that .xb1 with .xml, and we're good. So we're going to do that right now. But before we do, I want to prove to you that this works. Okay. Let's see. Mach 3 is no short. Okay, that's not in. And the reason that's not in, of course, is because, and many guys get this message, and I wanted to cover that because it is interesting. Uh, what happened is if you uninstall and you leave these icons on your desktop, you will find that these shortcuts go nowhere. So what I recommend is always clicking on it and then deleting it as well. Now you're totally clean. And of course, uh, that's part of the moderate settings when you're setting Revo. It did not forget that it because I did not set it to advanced. It did not pull it. So we're good to go there. Now what we want to do is come over here to the software. We're going to install it as if it was never installed. Right there. Click yes. Of course, uh, Windows 10 always goes through asking if you'd like to continue the installation. Now we click next. I agree. And of course, default Mach 3 folder is C. Um, you can once again change this depending on your system wherever you'd like. I leave it at default setting C. 
Now here's a question I get a lot, um, parallel port driver. If I'm using Windows 10, of course, you're not going to be using a parallel port driver. If you're using Windows 7, you're not going to use a parallel port driver, Windows 8, and so on. If you're using XP, that may be the case. You only require this driver, once again, if you're using Windows XP or Vista 32-bit. If you're using a later operating system, an ESS, a UC100, when I say ESS, I'm referring to an Ethernet smooth stepper, you do not require this driver. So once again, keep this system clean. Uncheck it. So I'm unchecking it in my case because, again, I'm using a laptop at Windows 10. I click Next. Once again, I'm not going to screw with any of this. You feel free if you'd like to. Uh, I don't recommend it because we're doing a direct install. So I would just recommend at this point clicking Next. Once again, Install folder will be default set to C Mach 3. Shortcut folder will be Mach 3, and that's, of course, on the C drive because we've just allocated it here. We then click Next, and now she's going through the installation process. Okay. Now, installation successful. We're all golden. So now what I'm going to do, as you can see now, we've got our shortcuts back over here. And um, I'm going to click on Mach 3 mil. And to prove to you that we are in, and this always happens as well, when you ever get this small screen, even though you expand it, close out a mock and just reopen it. This is standard. It's going to it's going to detect your screen settings. There you go. You're going to hit the reset, and you can see up here I'm in demo mode because I did not copy the license over yet. You can also see the default settings on my X and Y axis. Um, and if I come over here to config and go to ports and pins, you can see that kernel speed is set at 25,000 hertz, which is standard stock speed for entering Mach 3. You can also see motor outputs here are default, meaning this is what Mach 3 would load if naturally you just install the software. Now I'm going to show you how to load to save settings. Very simple. Uh, once again, guys, just so you know, that flash that came up, that's just a, a segregated program that I'm running. You will not have that on your system. End this session, yes. And now what we're going to do is come into my new folder where I did my backup files. I'm going to take my Mach 1 dat file. I'm going to go copy. And you want to copy this. Do not cut it. Copy it so you always have these um, files saved, especially if it's a latest setting on all of your system settings. You always want to have a backup of this. And I highly recommend, I cannot say it again, I'll say it more than once, highly recommend you have this on a hard copy drive, meaning either a flash drive or a, sec a separate uh, hard drive, preferably solid state, for uh, due to the fact that they have a lot less failures than um, standard rotating part hard drives. So again, um, I've got my Mach 1 license.dat. We're going to copy this. We're going to come over here once again to C. We're going to go to Mach 3. And in order to register Mach 3, all you have to do is paste this file anywhere in here, and it's done. Done right there. Okay, now what I'm going to do, see my XML backups up here. And just to show you that, even though we haven't even done anything yet, it's already got backups up here. Okay, now it's up to you to leave these. My recommendation is to get rid of these because these you do not require when you're just starting Mach 3 because you've just entered, or I should say you just installed Mach 3 fresh. So whatever backup you want to be created, you want it to start from where you created it. So the backup number one will naturally take over once you install your backup. And I'm going to show you now what we're going to do next. We're going to come over here once again to our desktop. And we're going to go right over here to our new folder. And once again, we're going to take our backup. And we're going to come over here. And we're going to go copy. And we're going to come back over to Mach 3. Real simple. And we're going to go, and you can see here where it says Mach3mil.xml. I'm going to place this there. I'm just going to paste it. There it is. And you can see it placed it right beside the XML of Mach3mil. Now, my recommendation, because we don't want conf any conflicts, click on the one that is labeled Mach3mil.xml. Click that. Now delete it. Now what we're going to do is rename this, real simple. Rename it where it says XB1, we're going to take out B1 and just go ML. Process done. Okay. If you change the file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, because this is the way we become active with this file. So now we have our backups loaded and we have our mock license loaded 
And in theory, we should be able to come right in and you guys will be rocking and rolling. So how do we know? Let's try it. Okay, you can see license to Viper Plasma. And that's all set. So this is an actual licensed piece of software. We can see our serial number. And of course, you can see now my DROs are zero. That was not the case before. Okay, if we hit machine coordinates, you can see there. And how we know that this is loaded correctly, if I hit ports and pins, you can see that my hertz setting is now at 100 hertz, which default setting we know is 25,000 hertz. And if I come over here to motor outputs, now it's registered for G540, 23456789. So there you guys go. Very, very simple process. You can now transfer Mach 3 to whatever PC you like and do it safely on top of knowing now that you always have automatic backups. Now, when you go to exit out of mock, and I'll do, I'm doing this real quick because you can tell I've done this a little more than one time, um, you can go to config here. And if you hit save settings, whenever you hit save settings, of course, it's going to create a backup for that session. So you'll see that your sessions will continuously grow in length. And that's why I recommend monitoring this because if you do not do it, and once again, we're in a new folder, we'll get out of here and go right back over to mock three. And what we want to do is just double check that you have one backup. And you can see the backup it created because I, I actually removed all the ones that were default set in there when we reinstalled Mach 3 is the backup where we started in which I actually took the original backup folder and renamed it XML and now it's there. So as you go in again and again and again, if you make any changes, it's going to keep adding backup files. So just pay attention to this and always stay with the latest revision. If it's on, you know, let's say if it was up to B24, that would be my latest revision because it means it updated 24 times. And now it's saying B1 because I've only updated one time. But again, this is extremely powerful. I have not seen it covered. I've discussed it in a previous video into, I believe it was the video that I discussed, Mach 3 settings you did not know you had. But this video is extensive because again, it just shows you how well this software was designed and it's still you know, pushing 20 years old now. So these backups will save your bacon if you guys pay attention. And once again, use your new folders. Just create that new folder on a, uh, a flash drive and you will be set. Label these carefully. Do not change ever the extension on your Mach 1 license.dat. If you change this at all, it will not work. So pay very close attention. I get that question a lot. Mach 3 mil.xb1. Once again, if it's your file and you know you're going to use it, leave the xb1 extension there so that you always know you have to change it. If you are going to change it already to XML, make sure you label the folder. You can change the name of the folder you place it in, but you cannot change the name of this into another name in sense of I have guys that will want to for some reason change it to like XT5 or some you know arbitrary uh, letter number combination. You need to pay close attention to what you're doing with this stuff. Remember computers don't make mistakes, people do. So take your time with the details and you guys now know how to exchange Mach 3 from one PC to another, never losing your settings. So again guys, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, Again, I'm looking at about 19 minutes here to cover this process and to cover it in a way that I know has never been seen online. This will easily save you a lot of time if you create these backups um, on it. Like I said, a flash drive or a hard drive, you'll never worry about your computer failing. And if it does, you'll always have your settings saved. And believe me, when you're doing access calibration, those settings, they take a while to put in. Many of you realize that. So. Again, guys, thank you all for your support. If you guys uh, have questions or require quotes, you know my direct email is storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also contact me direct at eDealerDirect. That's my eBay store. I'll put that link. You'll see it on the bottom of the screen, and you'll be all set. To all my subscribers who've requested this for some time, I do apologize. Uh, it's taken me a while right now. The shop is very busy. Uh, but again, I know this will help many of you. Thank you all for your support. Remember to like and subscribe because I'm going to be doing more videos like this. I got some other surprises coming that I think many of you are going to be um, really, really happy with. Uh, thank you all for your support. Take care.